Welcome to the beautiful Styrian Mountains for another chapter in the story of the Austrian Grand Prix. It's a short lap here in Spielberg with just 10 corners, 7 rights and 3 lefts, making up the total distance of 2.6 miles. And expect to see a lot of cars running wide today, especially through the last corner, as the wet conditions make the cars skittish through the downhill sections. Now, Anthony Davidson, I wonder, might we be in for some early pit stops today for the midfield teams, all trying to put some pressure on or disrupting things for the leaders up front? If you're in the middle of the pack, you know, you got your own race to run, I don't think they're going to be thinking about causing trouble up front. However, closer to the head of the pack, don't be surprised to see some split strategies. If you're running second and third, for example, bringing one car in for an undercut while leaving the other one out there longer can put a lot of pressure on the leader and maybe force them into an error. It's time to see how our drivers are stacking up after yesterday's exciting qualifying session. Sergio Perez will lead us away from pole position. Edging out Max Verstappen, he'll start from P2. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Bottas, Sainz, Charles Leclerc and Norris, Gasly, Ricardo, Fernando Alonso and Yuki Tsunoda. The owner driver, they'll be starting further back after an earlier grid penalty. Stroll, Sebastian Vettel and Hamilton, Russell, Giovinazzi, Robert Schwartzman and Mick Schumacher, Ocon, Raikkonen, Latifi and Nikita Mazepin. And with lights out just moments away, it's time to go down to the track. Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. And today we're back here with another My Team Career Mode Season 2 video. And it is the fifth round in this season. And as you can see, it is absolutely bucketing it down for the Austrian GP. It's certainly going to make it a difficult one. Yesterday, of course, was qualifying. If you guys haven't watched that, you might want to go and watch that. But of course, you can see we are a little bit further back on the grid than we have been in the last few races, of course, exception for Spain, where we decided to take grid penalties there. But we are taking a grid penalty today for a new CE. Of course, with this being round number five of the championship. So, because we are taking a grid penalty for a new C, that is a five place grid drop. We were due to start in between, I think it was Charles Leclerc and then the McLaren of Lando Norris. Yet, we have been dropped down the order. We were due to start P12, but some other drivers have taken grid penalties. And we'll have a look at that with the grid in a second. But in terms of the strategies, wet tyres certainly necessary for 36 laps of Spielberg. It is a difficult one in terms of what we're going to go for the strategy. As you can see on the forecast, it will be heavy rain, heavy rain, heavy rain, heavy rain, heavy rain, heavy rain. And then we get two blocks of light rain. Now whether those light rain blocks will become early enough or will they come too late? We, we don't know. We might end up getting into winter's conditions. However, I think even when the rain starts to let off, it'll have like a five, six lap de delay because the amount of standing water on track. So I think it will probably be a one stop, wet to wet. We'll have to monitor it though, see where we are, see if the track's drying out, maybe ready for winters at some point. So it will be a one stop strategy, wet to wet to start with. But we may make a change at some point to that strategy. Before, of course, we begin, though, it's time to have a quick refresh of the starting grid. Let's have a little look at the grid order. Then in terms of your penalties, we are, of course, taking a five place grid drop. As I said, we were due to start between Leclerc and Norris after quality, but that five place CE replacement has dropped us down to P11 instead of P12, and that is because Hamilton has also opted to take grid penalties. He's taken two for today, which drops him from P4, just behind his teammate, down to P14. But your pole sitter is, of course, Checo Perez. There is a title battle between myself and him. We've won the first four in this season, but as you can see today, it is 
his chance to start a good run. We've had four tracks where we stood a really good chance of points. I wouldn't have said that for Spain, but definitely three. And we've managed to, well, when I say points, even winning the races, of course, the likes of Bahrain, Imola, France. And now we hit some tracks where I definitely think the Red Bulls are going to have the advantage over us. So it is redemption for Checo. And really, Red Bull, are they going to allow Max Verstappen to fight him in this one? That's an interesting one, because if Perez wants to win the championship and wants to rival us, he is going to need to get a really good result today. Bottas will start P3, the lone Mercedes driver. He might be able to challenge the Red Bulls a little bit, but the Red Bulls so much of a quicker car that it's likely to be Perez versus Verstappen for the win here today. And then... Bottas probably will be in no man's land because that Mercedes is slower than the Red Bulls, but quite a chunk quicker than the Ferraris and the McLaren. So Bottas can get some good points over his teammate today, but certainly Mercedes outnumbered and dropping further away off the back of Red Bull in the Constructors' Championship there. So that could be pretty pivotal. Then, of course, Carlos Sainz and Charles Leclerc. The two Ferrari drivers, they'll be hoping to try and stay with Bottas, maybe to fight for a podium. But those two, very, very close. Expect them to just be going around together within the DRS zone of each other. Depends who is, of course, ahead. But those guys will be close. The question is, can Lando Norris stay with them? The McLarens have been looking a little bit slower, but Lando's really got some good form in him. We know he can get some great results in that McLaren out, perform it a little bit. They are very similar cars to McLaren and the Ferrari still in our career mode at the moment in the R&D. So Lando Norris will be looking to fight with those guys, potentially for a podium if there is a disaster in front. Then Pierre Gals will be really happy for P7. He'll be looking to stay there today. His teammates are a lot better than this season. Pierre will want to get some good points and so will Danny Rick in P8. He'll struggle to stay with the two Ferraris, Lando Norris and Pierre Gasly. He just hasn't really had the pace at all, really, so far this season. He has been struggling compared to his teammate and the Ferraris, and it wouldn't be a surprise if he is struggling to stay with them again today. It's just not there for Danny Rick. It really, really isn't. Then, Fernando Alonso and Yuki Tsunoda both qualified outside the top ten. They have been promoted up into the top ten. Alonso and Yuki, my teammate, hopefully those two can extend their points tally. Definitely important for Yuki. We are starting, not alongside each other, but you can see that he will be to the right of us, slightly further ahead. Of course, hopefully we can try and work forward together. It will be difficult to overtake, though, with it being a wet race. So that's Yuki P10, ourselves P11. But great for Alonso, outperforming that Alpine. He'll be looking for points. One man who has got a better car than the Alpine is Lance Stroll, but maybe low focus costing him a bit in quality, and he'll start P12. Tough order for him to be able to get points today. Meanwhile, Seb Vettel had a bit of a disappointing quality in, in, in his Aston Martin. The German only managed P13. Hamilton will start P14 due to an engine penalty, and although he does have that Mercedes, it's very difficult to overtake round here in the wet with no DRS. So do expect Hamilton to struggle to make progress in this one towards the points. Then George Russell, stunner of a quali. Hopefully he can stay there in what is a fairly uncompetitive Williams. He's ahead of Antonio Giovinazzi in the Alfa Romeo, who had a decent quali session to finish ahead of the Aston Martin of Robert Schwartzman, who got knocked out in Q1, which is a bit disappointing for him. Quite a chunk off his teammate. Mick Schumacher had a fantastic qualifying he might have got knocked out in q1 again but outperforming that house like russell outperforms the williams p18 for him he'll be looking to try and maintain that while russell will be looking to maintain p15 esteban Ocon p19 in his alpine a disappointing quality for him struggling with his car meanwhile alonso is massively outperforming it he'll be looking to go forward so will kimi raikkonen after a disappointing quality for him quite a chunk off his teammate so a disappointing quality for Raikkonen, Ocon and Schwartzman yesterday. And then the Latifi and Mazepin round out the grid. No real surprises there with Mazepin starting P22. But this will be a pivotal race. It is Red Bull revenge. The chance for Checo to get back to us in the championship. And also Red Bull to start to make 
a comfortable lead over us. Bottas will have to try and fly the flag with Mercedes reducing hopes of retaining their constructors' titles. And, of course, Bottas hoping that maybe he'll be able to get in a run of form to be able to get his drivers for this season. Of course, after winning it last season, it will certainly be interesting to see if he can start to perform well again. But watch out for the Ferraris chasing for P3. And we are going to be trying to fight forward a bit in this one with Yuki. It's certainly going to be a very important Grand Prix in this title fight. Before we do get into some racing action, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. But now it is time for the Austrian GP. Great. Bull Revenge begins here today at the Red Bull Ring. Round number five of this season, the Austrian GP. Five red lights. Clear out and away we go. And it isn't that great of a start from ourselves. Sonoda gets away a lot better than Alonso. Alonso down to P11 as that is Vettel. Trying to arrive at us. Lance Stroll with the dive bomb on both Alonso and my teammate. We're going to try and just get in between Lance Stroll and Fernando Alonso as Yuki's up to P9. Lance Stroll a little bit in front there. We're going to let him come through. So we can try the dive bomb on Yuki. Maybe Pierre Gasly and Daniel Ricciardo too. Are we going to get the move done on those guys? Yes, just about side by side on the exit. And that is P7 in this one. Gasly and Ricciardo fighting behind in front. I think the order is exactly the same as it was before as we run very very deep that's inviting the mclaren of ricardo we're struggling a little bit to find where the grip is in these conditions and you can see that there as hamilton's had a shocker of a start i think he's behind a williams there so really really bad start for him maybe two williams actually i think that's he's behind latifi too yeah i think latifi's had a fantastic start maybe dive bombed a few cars but as you can see ricardo's starting to get a bit further away from us here we are struggling off the start. Ahead of Pierre Gasly, though, and then my teammate currently sat in the points. It is very slippery out on track. So your order, Checo Perez ahead of Max Verstappen, and then Valtteri Bottas, Carl Sainz, Charles Leclerc, Lando Norris, Daniel Ricciardo, ourselves, Pierre Gasly and Yuki Tsunoda off the start in this GP. Hamilton has had a poor one. And this could be an exciting one, I have to say. If we get some potential overtaking, it is hard to overtake in these conditions, but it certainly isn't impossible, as we've seen with the dive bombs, and that is another little mistake. Now comes Pierre Gasly on us. Oh, what? What? He's just slowing down. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. What's happened there? Is it mechanical or something? Yellow flags? Oh, he's pulled over. Gasly, okay, about clear. to overtake us, has had a mechanical failure and a VSC. Why not? Let's throw in a VSC on lap number two for Gasly, who's just nicely parked it in a convenient place. Yes, Jeff, I'm dropping my speed. OK, so a VSC just to neutralise things for a little while. That's certainly interesting. Wasn't expecting to have a VSC for that. Yuki! No, Yuki's got a problem now. Oh, dear. Apparently Yuki's got a problem, doesn't pull into the pits, but oh, what a shame, what a shame. So Gasly with a problem, and now my, Gasly's out of the GP, not, not just a problem, and my teammate apparently has a problem. Wow, this is a dramatic start. As always, we're going to have a look at the race start once again, starting just outside the top 10 for ourselves, P11, the two, Dynamo Mechanics, F1 cars, there in P10 and 11 but Alonso struggled off the start and you can see that Lando Norris had a look at trying to get past Charles Leclerc and Carlos Sainz we were right through the middle of Fernando Alonso and Lance Stroll there after a bit of a poor start then trying just to get ahead of Lance Stroll allow him to go to the side a little bit there as in front you can see Charles Leclerc stops trying to fight with Carlos Sainz and just allows that to settle of course ourselves they're going three wide with Lando Norris and Daniel Ricciardo got to love the action there in this one full wet conditions very very wet as further back Pierre Gasly versus Daniel Ricciardo and Daniel Ricciardo 
sent it down the inside line to get that move done. We then made the mistake and got two positions earned back there. Back up into P7 with his teammate Lando Norris in front. But what an exciting start there. Notably, if we look a bit further back, of course, Yuki Tsunoda P10, Stroll P11. Stroll has, of course, got ahead of Lance... Lance has, of course, got ahead of Fernando Alonso. George Russell, P13, great start for him. With Latifi up to P14, stunning there, ahead of Seb Vettel. Hamilton really struggling off the start down to P16. Then you've got Schwartz from Giovinazzi, Schumacher and Raikkonen rounding out the top 20. We simply have to go on board with what I think is one of the best starts I have seen on this game. Definitely one of the best first laps. This was Nicholas Latifi, outlaunched. Kimi Raikkonen alongside. Then you've got Esteban Ocon, Mick Schumacher and Robert Schwartzman fighting a bit in front. Then has a little look down the inside line. And it's a pretty dismal start to this one. In fact, nearly loses out to the Alfa Romeo of Raikkonen and Nikita Mazepin. So, pretty OK start from Latifi. P20, not too bad. Is in front, of course, Hamilton. Starting to drop down the order a bit. But you've got to see this here. Latifi dive bombing. One, two, three, four, five, six. I don't even know how many that is. But that is... A simply fantastic dive bomb. Bit of contact on Seb Vettel, but then gets the move done on him. Look at that from Nicholas Latifi. Wow. Incredible. He's overtaken so many cars there. Couldn't exactly count. But dive bombed everyone, then gets the move done on Vettel. So Williams, P13 and 14 off the start. We are go once again in this one. Green flag, and we sort of are... A bit lonely now because Ricardo is up into P7 after our little mistake we made. We are making a couple of mistakes in these conditions, but Yuki quite clearly with the problem is holding up quite a train. And this has got to be very frustrating for him, but also frustrating for the team and myself. Because Yuki, it would be great if he could score some points this weekend. He's in the position and is just dropping further and further away. We made a mistake there in the middle sector and we've still managed to gain on him in terms of the amount that we're pulling away. And now Lance Stroll is through. Yuki Tsunoda, my teammate, having a disaster. He's clearly got a problem. What a shame in this GP. What a shame. It really is. And now the McLarens are in a bit of a better position than they were on the order of the grid, but... Still not that great of a position in this one because they are behind the two Ferraris of Leclerc and Sainz. And it's very difficult to overtake in these conditions. As I say that, everyone and their dog seems to be getting past my teammate at the moment because Stroll and Alonso are through. So that is the points positions there. Stroll will be happy to take some more points this weekend, especially seeing as he's got to fly the flag for Alpha Tower with his teammate out the Grand Prix. But... Early in this one, our pace is a little bit off the McLarens and the Ferraris. Slightly disappointing. Those guys still staying with the lonely Merc of Bottas. And then, of course, the two Red Bulls. With my teammate leading that train, you can see how much of a gap both Strong and Alonso have pulled on him. So, quite clearly, a problem, a reliability issue. And my teammate is really feeling the effects of it, hopefully. We don't see that problem ourselves. But Max Verstappen chasing down his teammate. 1 minute 16, flat exactly. That is the quickest lap there. We are just off it with a purple final sector. So we're starting to find some pace and some rhythm like we did last season when it was, of course, a wet race here at the Austrian Grand Prix. I'd like to show you guys this. Lewis Hamilton is continuing to make fantastic progress here. George Russell struggling a little bit. He is behind Hamilton, his teammate Latifi up in P12, who is now fighting with Seb Vettel. You can see those two there. Latifi was ahead of Sebastian Vettel. That stays no longer. We are focusing a bit on Lewis Hamilton's progress, but it does seem that these two opting to fight a little bit. Now Lewis Hamilton, is he going to have a look at Nicholas Latifi? No, he isn't there, but... He is making progress up the field. George Russell struggling a bit compared to his teammate in this one. Esteban Ocon struggling down in P20. Really poor start for him, but as it continues to book it down on lap number eight, it is Nicholas Latifi, P13, under threat from a charging Lewis Hamilton. Is Lewis going to try and pull out a move into the end of this sector? Down the inside line, maybe. Has a little look. Gets the move done 
on the Tifi. Lovely move there. It's Sebastian Vettel and then my teammate sat in front for the charging Mercedes. I bring good news for ourselves and of course my teammate Yuki Tsunoda. The problem for him seems to have been fixed. You can now start to see himself and I do believe that will be Lewis Hamilton and Sebastian Vettel starting to get away from that train. So the problem does seem to be resolved but they're now so far a bit back from Alonso and Stroll that an overtake on those guys for some points is pretty much impossible without of course a safety car you can't rule out a safety car but at the moment yeah it's looking pretty dire for those guys in terms of being able to get points we're getting pretty close to Ricardo, as you can see under braking there we had a little bit of a look if there is an opportunity for us to safely attempt a dive bomb I will do so it's always nice in a race though to have it when you've got ERS in a wet race like this and you can use ERS at every straight you want to use it at because by the time you've reached the corner and gone slowly because it's so wet you've replenished all that ERS you used down that straight once you've taken half an hour to steady the car in the wet conditions but lap 13 sort of time we start thinking about strategy do we want to maybe try an overcut or an undercut that could be interesting in terms of Ricard, it's starting to maybe drop away a little bit from Lando. Um, but I don't think that's indicating too much, really. Not too surprising that it is Danny Rick dropping off the back of the train a little bit, but he'll probably just end up catching up. And anyway, there's no real way to make an overtake in this race without being incredibly slow. So the order could could stay quite stationary from this position. Water, yeah, I agree, Jeff. I think we do need to clear a bit more of the standing water before we can choose the intermediate tyre compound because at this rate, we might actually be having a one-stopper wet to inters. We'll have to wait and see, have to monitor it, but we might go a little bit longer on the wets and then box for inters. Well, some excitement for once in this GP. We're going to be able to go for a move maybe on Danny Rick into the first corner here got to give him enough space but we are going to be able to get the move done on the mclaren as we go quickest once again and that is p7 which is certainly nice to have we've made an overtake in this one certainly isn't easy to do it in the wet conditions but that is p7 this rain could be with us and of course that means that lando norris sits in front it is going to be quite difficult if we want to be able to go for an overtake on Lando Norris in this one because he is a little bit quicker. He is similar pace to Sainz and Leclerc, but we are past Ricardo, And if we can catch up to Norris, Ricardo may start to struggle a little bit and drift off. Not that much, but in about five laps, the gap could become a couple of seconds as we go purple in the middle sector. So once again, going nicely, we might even top the charts at the end of this lap you can certainly see my teammate solved his problem and those guys are making progress towards Stroll and Alonso however even though there is still over half of this Grand Prix left to go as we are going to go quickest again no we're not only just even though there is half this Grand Prix to go I can't really see those guys being able to catch up without an incident involving either Stroll or Alonso who is starting to catch the conditions are certainly improving and we are getting a lot more pace and a lovely dive bomb on Norris, the second of the McLarens. You can tell it is drying up. Very light rain conditions here. The next set will be inters in terms of the pit stops. And the question is, when do you come in? It is light rain conditions at the moment, but barely any standing water compared to the start of this race. We've just got Lando Norris, which was a really nice move on him up the inside line into turn three wasn't expected to be able to go for it there but as I was getting down the straight I was like okay we're getting closer we're getting closer we've managed to go for the move and I think this is the lap you can see Norris starting to drop away which is certainly helpful for us let's have a look do any of these guys decide to react no we're going to stay out one more lap here one more lap we're going to take it to lap number 18 and I think then we're going to box Weather report. Light rain will stay with us for at least 20 minutes, maybe more. Light rain is here to stay. Inters and wets will probably have similar pace at the moment. Okay, so inters and wets with similar pace. The question really is, when do we come in? When do we 
fit the fresh inters. You can see we're going a lot quicker in the first sector. Everyone's going to have more pace here now because it is certainly becoming a drier track. You don't want to pit too early because you could A, lose time and B, you can have more tyre wear. However, if you pit earlier when the others pit too late, then you're going to have a massive advantage. Check your MFD for a new and Jeff option. is suggesting it here. Confirmed. We are going to come in. This was the planned lap for the fresh set of wets on it. I didn't think we'd need wets twice in this GP as we are getting a bit messy here. But this is the lap. We need to get this final couple of corners right. And we're going to be joined by Charles Leclerc here. And not Lando Norris. Not Lando Norris. Does Daniel Ricciardo come in? Yes, he does. And Verstappen has come in for the intermediate tyres. So here are your pit stops. Charles Leclerc's in. And Ricciardo behind us. Verstappen already exited. He's been nice and quick with his pit stops the intermediates are on and charles just stays ahead the question is now can we get the overtake on those guys who have stayed out on the wet my teammate has stayed out as a result of us pitting but there you go we come out comfortably ahead of ricardo on the inters and now it is time for a bit of pushing we're gonna have to get used a little bit to how these inters are driving but the question is how much quicker or slower are we going than those guys on the wets because if these inters are a lot quicker than those wets then we could potentially get the move on signs so if they're slower we could lose out to lando norris also pivotal in terms of perez versus verstappen and bottas as those guys are coming in now for their pit stops so interesting situation here those guys are in of course lap number 19 for them charles leclerc starting to get away maybe using these inters to their full potential we are struggling a little bit to find what they can do and a mistake this could cost us potentially lando norris here lando norris could be ahead that's the question where is charles leclerc going to be versus carlos signs where are the leaders going to be and that's verstappen has got the move pivotal scenes signs is just in front as we are going to run a bit wide we're going to come out comfortably in front of lando norris and pitting a lap earlier is much better and i think verstappen has the lead on his teammate here so that is pivotal we did of course mess up a bit at turn one didn't gain or lose anything i know we've gone purple in sector one but we already the already have the fastest lap there you go though pitting earlier has proved very very much a good idea had we not have made that mistake we probably would have had the move on carlos Sainz too but charles leclerc ahead of Sainz and ricardo ahead of norris as a result and of course pivotally for us and the championship it is mr checo perez who has dropped behind max verstappen so the dutchman leaves here at the red bull ring a lovely rundown of the order. Then only one in this video, of course, with it being a one-stop strategy. Verstappen has jumped Checo in the pit. He takes the lead, and that is pivotal for the championship. Less points. Perez is going to be gaining on ourselves. Valtteri Bottas remains P3, now on his intermediate tyres, going strong for a podium. The only Mercedes currently in the top 10. Charles Leclerc leads Carlos Sainz and there you go ourselves having a look at Carlos Sainz there we've got the move done thought I'd show you that on camera guys there instead of showing it live with me racing a little bit of a nice replay of our overtake there so it's Charles Leclerc head of ourselves we got a lovely move done then it is of course Carlos Sainz who is now down to P6 suffering from pitting later along with Lando Norris who has lost out to teammate Daniel Ricardo, who sits P7. Lance Stroll sits P9 still ahead of Fernando Alonso. No changes there. Then quite a long way back, Lewis Hamilton has managed to get past my teammate in the pits. Of course, the problem fixed for Yuki, but now sits P12 ahead of Sebastian Vettel. Then the rest of the drivers, as I think we'll just change camera angle to go on board with George Russell here, as you can see the amount of rain coming down. He sits P14 ahead of Antonio Giovinazzi. P15, 
Latifi down a P16, still great work from him. Ocon has recovered to P17. Schwartzman down to P18. Schumacher down to P19. Raikkonen struggling in P20 with Nikita Mazepin, the last of the runners, P21 on lap number 21. Charles Leclerc, though, is really looking fantastic. We are looking pretty decent on the back of him. And Jeff does say we won't be making another pit stop. It depends how long the right rain stays here. If it stays until the end of the race, we will not be using slicks. However, there is a possibility that we will be using slicks come the end of this one. Very unlikely, because it did say light rain until the end. But light rain came, what, um, just before halfway through this race when it was two out of something like six bars. So it is quite unpredictable at the moment with the weather and there's a potential that we could end up with a bit of slicks racing at the end of it or at least a potential gamble to sw switch onto the slicks a word on my teammate he has dropped down to p12 at the moment yellow flags are out a safety car now would spice things up a little bit it is the alfa romeo of will that be kimmy or antonio antonio i think that's antonio yes it is Antonio Giovinazzi is out of the session with a mechanical failure. Shame for him. And a VSC. We like our VSCs today. It's not multiple vehicles being stopped on the track, Jeff. It is just one as the Red Bulls pass the Alfa Romeo. But there we go. Second VSC today. Full course safety car would be nicer. But a VSC... Thanks to Antonio Giovinazzi parking his car on the side of the track. So the racing will be neutralised for a little while here. We can't quite catch a break here. Another mechanical failure. And the two Red Bulls have run into it. Is that a mechanical? I don't know. They're going very slowly. Was it a spin? And has someone been collected? Because the two Red Bulls and the Mercedes have been thrown together. Was that a front wing I saw there? What has happened? Because that is Perez down to P3 here in the Grand Prix. This is turning into a disaster for Checo. I don't quite know what's happened there. Someone's collided. I think it was the Aston Martin of Schwartzman and an Alfa Romeo. And there was a front wing. Someone's running without one. Yellow flags temporarily. And Perez is down to P3. Bottas right in the mix. Wow. This is very dramatic. What has happened? I really, really don't know. But it could be a very pivotal moment in the Grand Prix. Maybe even the championship as we get a bit sideways once again there. I've become a bit of a detective. And we've got a replay of what happened here. Robert Schwartzman was P17 in his Alfa Romeo. Then lost it like he did last season. As my team in... Oh! My days, Kimi Raikkonen has gone ploughing into his side pod. And then the Red Bulls are sat behind. They are sat, stuck there. We need to see that from another re angle. But as you can see, Verstappen, Perez then backed up. Let's go to these guys here. Perez is going to try to lap. Perez is going to try to lap the Alfa Romeo, but gets stuck behind him. And then Bottas comes through because the Alfa Romeo, lacking a front wing, that's Kimi Raikkonen, held up Perez and drops him down to P3. My days, let's have a look at that from another angle. Kimi Raikkonen was minding his own business until that he sees Schwartzman, spins into him, got nowhere to go. Lucky not to be out the GP. And that is very, very costly. You can see Verstappen gets held up there. Then it's Perez who tries to come through now. He's getting back up to speed down the straight. These guys were severely held up. Now he's having a look, but Bottas spots the chance alongside as Perez gets held up behind the Alfa Romeo and then comes through. But that's a horrific incident for Kimi Raikkonen. Think Schwarzman might have a penalty after that. But wow, what a horrific incident there. Schwarzman is ahead of the two Red Bulls, but Kimi Raikkonen has lost his front wing and will now have to return to the pits. And that incident and mistake from Schwartzman leads to Kimi Raikkonen with no front wing and potentially a championship-changing moment. I don't quite know what's happening here because there's more yellow flags. There's someone went off in the first sector and the gap between the lead of Verstappen and his teammate has massively increased to Perez. 
Someone went off in the first sector of Williams. They've got back going. The man who had front wing damage has now pitted. That was Kimi Raikkonen. Bottas and Perez are fighting, but Bottas stays in front as there's then a back marker behind them. Currently, Lando Norris got really held up by the Haas. 31 laps out of 36 here. And this race is becoming absolute carnage times 20 at the moment. Kimi Raikkonen's got out the pits. He, of course, is now last in this GP after that problem. And the leader, Max Verstappen, is cruising ahead. If Perez finishes P3 and we finish P5, that is fantastic for the championship here. Damage limitation. We're getting very messy this lap, dropping away from Charles. We don't want to do that. We want to be in with a shout of an overtake as we get towards the end of this one because P4 with Perez P3 would be very, very helpful. This is what happened with the other incident just off the back of the Raikkonen incident. And you can see Raikkonen leading the front of this as the Haas moves out the way. He's coming in for a fresh front wing and now Lando Norris goes to take the apex and goes into the back of Kimi Raikkonen and that means that he has lost his right side of his front wing. Let's see if we can get to that here. Yes, he's... Oh, that's a lot of front wing damage. He's lost the right side of his front wing. Lando Norris is going to have to come into the pits for a pit stop. And this is all because Robert Schwartzman span. Now Kimi Raikkonen with that incident breaking on the inside of the corner because he's lost his front wing and Norris plows into him and that is going to force Norris to pit and he will be out of the points. What a shame for Lando. This is the opportunity now. We've just gone quickest at the end of the last lap after Verstappen topped the charts and we are going to hopefully be able to go for a move on Charles Leclerc. We are side by side. We went round the outside line. A little bit of oversteer on the exit but that is the move done up to P4. Perez is P3. This has turned into a fantastic GP for us. We were set to not score points from our grid position, but it has just got worse and worse for Checo. Down from P1 before the pit stops to P3 with some absolute drama from back markers. Treacherous wet conditions. It has felt like a long 35 laps, but we are going to make it 36 by the end of the lap. We're just about to start there we go fastest lap for ourselves blue flags being waved clearly for someone who is being lapped in front Perez looking to get past the house but this is turned into a disaster of a GP for Checo Perez it was a chance for him to win with us taking minimal points but we fought our way past both McLarens and both Ferraris and now we find ourselves in P4 with a struggling Checo Perez, only 3.7 seconds in front. It will be just off the podium for us here today. P4 in Austria with a fantastic result for any late me bottling it here. But this is a pivotal one for us. Really, really is. It gives us great opportunity in the rest of this season to be able to get some great results. And I do wonder maybe if Checo Perez has had a problem, maybe a little knock on his front wing or something like that, because he really hasn't recovered. But it is Verstappen after the heartbreak of losing P2. Last time out, wins here for Red Bull at their home track. That's it then for another spectacular Grand Prix here in Austria and a truly magnificent drive to hang on and take the win. So Anthony, what made the difference out there today? Well, they clearly have a car that comes alive in the kind of conditions we were dealing with today. It's a very balanced package in the wet and what that means is that the drivers have confidence to attack. And having that confidence gets you on the power earlier, it lets you break later and can put you a long way up the road. The drivers are en route to the podium as we speak. What a fantastic win for the Red Bull team. They performed exceptionally today, keeping us firmly on the edge of our seats throughout the entirety of the race. Congratulations to every one of the team.
Take a breath, people. What a Grand Prix that was, I have to say. Wow. Um, I wasn't expecting it to be an absolute showstopper, I have to say. With it being a track that's notoriously quite difficult to overtake at times, even in dry races, when cars have similar pace because of the short DRS zones that they've got. But, of course, very difficult to overtake here, usually in the wet. No DRS. No real opportunities to get through, but we managed to make it work. We ended up getting four, was it? Three. No, three pivot, four pivotal overtakes by the end of that one, really. We picked off Danny Rick, and then, of course, we actually managed to get Lando Norris in the pits, I do believe. Then we got Carlos Sainz and Charlotte Claire. So technically, we got four, but three ones that we actually did on track, and that really, really set us up nicely in that Grand Prix to come home for P4. 12 points in a race when we started P11 just outside the top 10 and plenty of things went against the people around us an early disaster for Pierre Gasly and then of course Perez P1 on the grid it should have been it should have been today and lost to Max Verstappen because of the pit strategy and then of course lost out to Valtteri Bottas because he had to slow down to get out of the way from what was quite a slow Kimi Raikkonen without a front wing but your winner today is the Dutchman Max Verstappen wins for Red Bull Red Bull stronger than Mercedes this weekend yet Valtteri Bottas manages P2 helped by the incidents around managed to of course get Perez thanks to that and finishes only 3.5 seconds off the leading Red Bull. 18 points for Valtteri. He'll be happy with that. That's 18 points. More than his teammate was going to take until Lando Norris broke his front wing. So that means he's got 17 more than Lewis Hamilton, which is certainly what Bottas was looking for here today. But it is the Red Bulls much more dominant. A lovely tally of 40 here. The crucial thing is that Checo Perez only takes three points away from us at a race when we decided to take a five-place grid penalty and in conditions which I thought would certainly put it into his hands but a really great result for us considering the circumstances and a disaster for Checo the Mexican in his Red Bull. Wow, what a Grand Prix. So P1 to P3 for Checo, P3 to P2 for Bottas but P2 to P1 for Max Verstappen and 45 minutes long this race I have to say a bit of a longer one of course because of the wet conditions but it has certainly been an exciting one we did have the fastest lap for points in the Grand Prix but that did go to Lando Norris who sadly finished outside the top 10 he set that on fresh intermediates by finishing outside the top 10 though he doesn't take that point p5 Charles Leclerc in his Ferrari got ahead of Carlos Sainz thanks to the pit stops then lost p4 when we managed to get the overtake but unlike the Ferrari Carlos Sainz and Daniel Ricciardo managed to stay really close to us was really competitive in this one and a well-deserved 10 points for Charles Leclerc here today Carlos Sainz looked decent really did today similar to his teammate as always just lacked a little bit as we started to get onto the inters compared to his teammate and spent a bit of time defending from the mclarens but eight points for carlos would be frustrated he's lost two to his teammate but those two as ever extremely close and ferrari pivotally for them finish with more points than mclaren in fact McLaren only takes six points and that's from Daniel Ricciardo who finishes P7. Not too disappointing considering he was really the slowest of the four once again. We know that from his best lap time but Daniel Ricciardo has struggled compared to the two Ferraris and his teammate. He'll be happy today that he is not down there at the bottom of the top ten but of course McLaren really struggling compared to Ferrari this season. The trend continuing a little bit from last season both teams though are struggling in the constructors and they won't be happy to see Lance Stroll P8 another great drive from the Alpha Tauri driver this was the point last season when his focus dropped after a really frustrating 
Grand Prix where he had another mechanical failure. But this season, he has been riding off others' misfortunes, and that is P12 to P8 at the flag. He got a decent start, and in the end, it takes four points, a solid drive from the AlphaTauri driver, and once again, outscoring his teammate Pierre Gasly. Fernando Alonso, P9 in the Alpine. A good, solid result for him. Might be a bit annoyed that he couldn't overtake Lance Stroll right on the back of him for most of the Grand Prix. But Alonso taking another couple of points. That will help his points tally. And again, looking good this season. He didn't score until round number nine last season and then failed at Mexico. That's certainly not the trend this season. He is scoring consistently. One man who you'd expect to be up there is Lewis Hamilton. He certainly isn't today. Did recover to P10 from P14, which in the circumstances doesn't sound too bad. One point for him, but actually when we analyse it, he's got a position thanks to Lando Norris breaking a front wing. He's got a position thanks to Gasly's DNF, a position thanks to Giovinazzi's DNF, and a position thanks to Raikkonen, well, technically not really with Raikkonen and Giovinazzi, but definitely gain a position thanks to Pierre Gasly's mechanical failure. And then, of course, Lando Norris's broken front wing. And then gained thanks to Yuki having that problem. When we say gained thanks to that problem, but he couldn't really make the overtakes. He was stuck in the train, competing with the Alfa Romeos, the Hasses, the Aston Martin of Schwartzman and the Williams. And to be honest, Lewis Hamilton really just struggled at the start of the race. He found a groove towards the end and managed to stay ahead of Lando Norris and actually started to catch on Alonso but that one point for Hamilton you think it could really have been a bit more had he had a better start really got going maybe he could have rivaled Alonso and Stroll for P9 and P8 then Lando Norris what a misfortune for him I mean to be honest it was quite a mistake Giovinazzi's teammate Raikkonen Raikkonen had nowhere to go he had nowhere to go the Ferrari of Sainz and the McLaren of Ricardo were going to the left, so he moved to the right safely on the apex at the corner. Lando Norris, I know he wasn't really blindsided that much, decided that he'd moved to the inside and broke his front wing. But a real shame for Lando, not much he could do there. It would have been, I think, P7 at the flag or P8. It would depend on the battle with, of course, Danny Rick, because he was looking strong in that. But... Real shame for Lando, couldn't recover to the points and once again struggling like he did last season. Yuki had a promising starting position, P10, but finishes P12. Real shame with the reliability. He had that issue, dropped him way away from Alonso and Stroll, who maybe he would have been able to compete with, but dropped him well away from those guys and left him at the flag. P12, of course, lost out to Hamilton later in the race. No real surprise with that one Hamilton in a much faster Mercedes but despite the mechanical issue still finishes P12 so a solid drive despite the circumstances once the mechanical issues were fixed he went along with Hamilton and Vettel to the end so a decent drive considering the circumstances for Yuki so Vettel P13 he'll be a little bit disappointed with that couldn't make much progress in his Aston Martin but the German it was an okay race for him got Stuck behind my teammate for quite a bit of it and couldn't really make progress forward. Couldn't make it count by getting past my teammate also in that long train when Yuki had the problem and couldn't chase down Alonso and Stroll. So a bit of a disappointing one for Vettel. Not disappointing for the Williams of George Russell. Start at P15 on the grid and finished P14 at the flag. The last of the drivers not to be lapped. Really great work from him and the Williams. It was a decent start to the race, stayed where he needed to stay. Dropped a bit behind Latifi at one point, but overall a fantastic drive from the Brit to take P14 in that really uncompetitive Williams. But Esteban Ocon might have recovered from P19 to P15. Still low behind the Williams, struggling in the Alpine. He gained quite a bit from the misfortunes of, well, Mr. Kimi Raikkonen and the DNF of Antonio Giovinazzi and then Robert Schwartzman spin. So pretty lucky in that sense, but a bit of a shame for Esteban Ocon that he isn't managing to extract what Alonso is out of that Alpine car. Mick Schumacher in his ass. P16, the German. 
It's got to be happy with that. Again, like the Williams, very uncompetitive machinery. So to gain a couple of places, it is a solid result. And also for Nicholas Latifi from P21 on the grid, was looking fantastic at one point in the race. But P17, he'll be happy with that too. Another great drive from him. Robert Schwartzman for the ass in the Aston Martin. He was looking in an OK position until, of course, that spin that cost. Kimi Raikkonen, his front wing, and pretty much any chance of a decent race. It also gave him a five-second time penalty. For Robert Schwartzman this weekend has been one to forget down there, way behind his teammate, and today causing a calamity. He did actually spin, as I said, Last season with ourselves, that was of course at turn one. But today, span and collected an unlucky Raikkonen. Mazepin finished P19, couldn't capitalise on Robert Schwartzman spinning either. Another disappointing one, the slowest lap out of everyone for his best lap. Only managed a 1 minute 15 flat. So a bit disappointing for him, again struggling with just driving well. Nikita Mazepin there just doesn't have the pace. Kimi Raikkonen, the last of the finishers, thanks to losing his front wing, had nowhere to go with the Schwarzman incident, pretty much taken out, had to fit, and that cost him any decent results in this one. P20 for Kimi after a disappointing quali yesterday. Then, Antonio Giovinazzi and Pierre Gasly failed to finish, thanks to mechanical failures. Well, let's have a little bit of a look at the implications on the standings, and with Checo Perez only managing P3 and ourselves climbing back up, the order to P4 does, of course, mean that we have a lead of 40 points. We have 114. Checo has 74. So the gap has been closed, but by three, I do believe. So not exactly what Perez would have been hoping for. He's going to need to bring that gap back with the next three races, of course, Silverstone, Hungary and Spa, of which two of them he will definitely have an advantage in terms of pace, one of which it could be quite close but 40 points behind on 74. It was a pivotal one for him this race weekend. It should have been Perez getting a bit of revenge on us after the first four races of the season, but not to be for him, and he sits P2. One man who has caught up, though, Max Verstappen glides through into P3 this weekend, putting Red Bull P2 and 3 in the championship order. He has 57 points and sits exactly 57 points behind us. Only 17 now behind teammate Checo. So if Max can get some consistent results, he could launch ahead of his Mexican teammate. Valtteri Bottas has also moved up the rankings. P4 now for him in his Mercedes. He has 49 points. 65 behind us, so pretty much out of the title fight without some absolutely incredible drives from him. Again, he has just been a bit on and off this season. An OK result for him today. P2, very good, ahead of the Red Bulls, generally gifted, thanks to Checo Perez having to really slow down to get out of the way of Kimi Raikkonen, who was trying to... Well, let the others out of the way. He had nothing he could do. Blue flags, of course, but Perez couldn't react quick enough, couldn't get to the left quick enough, and that meant that Bottas came flying through. So Bottas sits P4 ahead of his teammate, Lewis Hamilton, quite comfortably. Hamilton is officially out of the title fight here. It is still, as I said, mathematically possible for him, but it would take something pretty incredible so realistically the top four taking it for the title maybe Bottas can get in the mix but Hamilton with that P10 today and just one point sits on 34 that's only three ahead of Sebastian Vettel and his Aston Martin who sticks in P6 with no points today he's just three behind Lewis only three ahead of Lance Stroll in his Alpha Tauri Lance looking pretty decent. The Canadian there, still P7 with some more points today. So did Alonso in terms of getting more points today. He has 27 now, one behind Lance. P9 is Carlos Sainz in his Ferrari, the first of the Ferrari and McLaren cars. To say that their P9 is the best for those guys is pretty shocking so far this season. 21 points for him, one ahead of my teammate Yuki who sits in front of Charles, who has the same amount of points. That's 
20 there. And then Daniel Ricciardo with 19. In terms of those guys, the gap from Sainz down to Ricciardo is just two points. So those guys are very close. Pierre Gasly and Lando Norris, though, not scoring today, either for mechanical failure or extra pit stops due to broken front wing reasons. Those guys sit P13 and P14, one point between them. But Pierre Gasly leading the two sits 10 points, not 10 points, sorry, not 10 points, 11 points behind Daniel Ricciardo. George Russell, Schwarzman, Ocon, the TV, Raikkonen, Antonio Giovinazzi, Mick Schumacher, and Nikita Mazepin still yet to score. That's all of those guys there. But once again, Vettel, Stroll, Alonso still up there in the order. P6, 7 and 8. Signs, Leclerc, Ricardo, Gasly, Norris are trying to catch up. Not so much for Gasly and Norris, but those guys are trying to catch up. They're getting closer, but it is not to be at the moment. Ferrari and McLaren are really, really struggling this season to get the results that they need, especially in the drivers. And for McLaren, the constructors. Let's have a look at the constructor standings then. We still lead the order with 134 points, three ahead of Red Bull, who have 131 after a strong weekend at home here today. Mercedes sits P3, 51 points behind ourselves with their chances of retaining the Constructors' Championship starting to run away. Ferrari have moved up into P4. 41 points for them now starting to recover. 93 points behind us. So it is ourselves, Red Bull and Mercedes for the Constructors' Championship. Alfa Tauri down to P5. They have seven less than Ferrari. Then Aston Martin, five points behind sit P6. Alpina down to P7. They are four points behind Aston Martin. McLaren, though, despite a good result for Danny Rick today, still sit down in P8 at the bottom of those who have finished yet. Only just one point behind Alpine, so they should be able to start to climb back up the order towards Ferrari. But to say McLaren are in eight, it has been a dramatic start to this season. Halfway through it now, the second half, I'm sure, will be just as exciting. Williams, Alfa Romeo and Haas still yet to score. But in terms of the drivers, it is looking very interesting now. A poor race weekend for Checo Perez. Definitely today wasn't too bad in quality at all. Of course, took pole, so really, really poor today, though. That has meant that he only gains three points on us and sits 40 Behind. That's the pivotal story. Verstappen and Bottas close up. Hamilton dropping away. And the Ferrari and the McLaren drivers starting to catch up on those high-flying midfield drivers. But still a long way away. And of course, yes, Ferrari have made their way up to P4. But McLaren still down there in P8. Struggling behind Alfa Tauri, Aston Martin and Alpine. Of course, for the constructors, Red Bull just behind but there you have it. Your winner today, Max Verstappen from Valtteri Bottas and then Checo Perez down to P3. A real disaster for him. As I said, only gaining three points in ourselves in P4. Then you've got Charles Leclerc, Carlos Sainz, Daniel Ricciardo, Lance Stroll, Fernando Alonso and Lewis Hamilton with Norris taking the fastest lap. Thanks to having to pit for a new set of inters due to a broken front wing. Yuki P12, but what a GP it has been. Late carnage with that huge crash involving Robert Schwartzman and Kimi Raikkonen after Schwartzman's ban. And then, of course, that led to a series of events that left Perez down in P3 and Lando Norris out of the points. So that is the halfway point of this season if you guys are enjoying these videos don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel but next time in this series will of course be when we head towards the sixth round of the season it will be quali for silverstone that will be an exciting one we have a lead of 40 points after today can perez make real inroads on us next time of course that will start with qualifying before the race but if you guys haven't already don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you can catch that but 
Thanks a lot for watching. We take P4 here. Only three points behind Perez and Verstappen wins. I'll catch you all sometime soon.